So, welcome to DustyPete.com, because this is a place where we can safely explore the endless ways of God and the interconnection of His creation, where belief understandings, they may be challenged, divine misunderstandings, they may exist in traditional teachings, they just might falter as we pursue connection, context, and community with God and each other here in an environment of grace and love. So, feel free to journey around the space. Explore. We have many different topics for discussion. Outside the class, Sons of the Father, the Bible Project, Aleph Beta, Follow the Red String, and more. So lend your ear, then lend your voice. Join a conversation, start a conversation, ask questions. Because on this journey, you're probably around folks that just might be pondering the same thing. Community that can build and connect. So come in and join us. And welcome to The Dusty Feed. And good evening, and welcome to Dusty Feet. It's October 5th, 2023, and this is another one of our special series, Sons of the Father. We're continuing our discussions on The Chosen, right? Created by Dallas Jenkins. We'll be continuing with Season 3 with Episode 3, Physician, Heal Yourself. During this series, my dad, John Wern, my brother, Jim Wern, and myself, we're going to be having a conversation. And we'll be reflecting on the things that have impacted us along our way. So, welcome to the Sons of the Father. In the description below are links to all of the audio, video, and source documents that we use here in the Dusty Feet. We want to make sure that any material we use here is properly credited to those folks who work so hard to bring it to us. Without their efforts, the learning we do here does not happen. And of course on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon if you want to remind And here we are, the sons of the father. So again, as always, we want something we want to reference up front. Sometimes issues can arise from discussions like these and the assumptions that we have on y'all listening. It's always unintentional, but if you don't understand or have questions concerning something we've discussed, please feel free to leave a comment. We'll respond as best we can. Or just always send an email to bob at the dustyfeed.com. Sometimes just a more private way to ask questions. Okay, so tonight's episode, um, Physician, Heal Yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I really do enjoy when Dallas uh, takes us on a journey and a peek at the uh, the unsaid Jesus, right? In this case, it's it's him as a child, right? And and um, because you know we we seem to be missing a bit in history. But when I was talking with with my brother, and I said, or in a sense, are we right? Was Jesus' childhood and upbringing so normal, um, as in his home life, right? Even though there was that little excursion to Egypt. But his upbringing was a normal Jewish family upbringing. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that just by the lack of information, maybe we're actually being told he was raised, lived, and taught just like you. And by that, he's talking to the original audience because uh, that's who those gospel accounts were originally written to. Food for thought. Coffee and donuts at the ready. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and that slight peak, or maybe better realization, that the rest of Jesus's family were also affected by this as well. Mm-hmm. And there were challenges there. Okay. That said, Daddy O, what um, what stood oh, out? Oh man. Um. I, I, I still am a little confused about the physician heal thyself. I, I didn't see that woven in like the other ones are. But um, I like Jesus as a small boy. I thought that was very interesting because that would have been like you just said, Bob. You know, that's the way they were raised. That's the way they lived. It, they, he didn't have his private room with pictures on the wall of God and all that. He just he was just one of the boys, mm -hmm. and he didn't exercise unlike Superman when he was Superboy. Uh, he could still be. He didn't do that sort of thing. He was just Jesus, mm -hmm. and um, I, I and and then it jumps right into him returning to his hometown. He sends the disciples out to do their thing. Um, we'll find out more about what they did and didn't do in a couple of adventures from now. But um, I thought I thought it was it was interesting um, that he goes home and he visits with his mother, and it, it's everything he does is for a purpose. He's very, very strategic. He knew he didn't mm -hmm. have much time. So he goes home to see his mother. But he's really planning on, I think, he's planning on speaking. He'd like to get a platform where he can say who he is, which Lazarus gives him. And I've never heard anything, read anything in scripture about Lazarus being a boyhood friend. Um, uh, I don't know whether they talk about that when he says he goes and visits them, but I, I thought that was very um, human-esque, if you will, uh, where he, this, this was one of the dudes that, that uh, uh, well, the other guys too, you could see when he said about playing that game, whatever they did, he says, oh, I haven't played since I was here. And the guy goes, oh, my gosh, <laughs> no chance. And uh, I, I, all those those human things that, that were woven into the story, I, I thought were uh, a very relatable uh, as we look back on our on our own childhoods and our own youth. And we see you guys are old enough now to remember some of that. I remember some of that when my father moved from Ohio to California. That's a big move. And, and he to a job he didn't know anything about to an area. Obviously, he knew nothing about and to take go from his family and from my mother's family. That's kind of what uh, Jesus did when he took off, he was a man, of course, and my father was a man. But those those things in, happen in our lives that seem so random and uh, it doesn't quite make sense. Why all the way to California? You know, why not Michigan or or some other place? And uh, and and why why did Jesus go where he did? My mm -hmm. father was very strategic in that. He talked to the to his good friend who had gone there and had a job and uh, knew that it was a booming industry, the the airplane building. That's where he went to work for Lockheed. Uh, and Jesus, uh, when when he went out and he started to gather, he was very strategic about what he did. And And this is kind of of a picture, I think, of how strategic he was. Um, 
he sent them in on missionary work, right? And what about the ladies, his mom says? Oh, they're helping uh, Andrew and, and his brother's father start an oil business to support the, the ministry. Uh, those kinds of things are, are, are just um, where this, this episode has so much to say hmm. about uh, what happened in his life and how he planted everything after his wow. talk with uh, the rabbi. Uh, and he says, well, if it's okay with him, I'll go ahead and say it. He knew what he was going to say before he ever said it, I think. And the, the, the uh, rabbi obviously didn't have a clue or he never would have permitted him to do it. But that Lazarus just kind of, placed him in a position where he he couldn't say no he said he hit what did he do he appealed to his ego because hmm. other young ones hear about this guy that went out and did so many incredible things they're going to want to come and be taught hmm. under uh what's it benjamin right yeah yeah under rabbi benjamin and I, I, I just, um, I, I, from talking to Ema, to, everything was so strategic to me. So, hmm. Jim, your turn. <sighs> this one was interesting for me. I think to start with, it was interesting that this one was all about Jesus. This wasn't about the disciples because they're all out on mission. And so to, to get more of an insight into Jesus and his childhood, his upbringing, and then, you know, some of that got brought into to now. The, it, I felt emotional on this one in a lot of different ways. It was that excitement as he's talking in the temple and you can see Mary's face um, yeah. uh, get all excited uh and um and then some of the other men you know they're all getting all concerned and i'm getting chills and i'm getting tears uh because this is such a powerful moment but i think dallas did a good job of of leading up to it because this is also it was a more serious episode uh when you see jesus you know reflect back you know that he went home to get that box. There was something special about the box. And, you know, Mary, you know, saying, uh, he said, I need the box while I'm here. And she's like, so soon. And he's like, if not now, you know, when? Um, the tension that she's feeling of knowing the time is coming. And I can't remember, Bob, you might remember um, better than I right now. There's a point in the gospels where Jesus gets to, you know, he sets his face on Jerusalem. He knows that's, you know, heading that direction. It's like all of a sudden everything shifts. And this felt like that kind of an episode where everything just shifted. And now yes, we're getting serious. Philippi, that we're <laughs> okay. Not, th this episode. Not quite there yet. Kind of drives you. We're, we're not there as far as biblical timelines concerned. Right. Because with right. that, basically he goes as far north and cheats. That's when the rabbis chase him up there. And then mm -hmm. he basically says, okay, and he kind of sets them on their way. And then he goes further north. He goes where yeah. a rabbi wouldn't go, mm -hmm. which forces them to return to Jerusalem. Right. And then he sets his heels and then he starts the 115 mile journey that will right. eventually end up a Passover. But that's. But yeah. And but you feel that yeah. he's emotionally beginning we, to prepare. We've gotten there a little and, bit with this one. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and even even like when he walks in, I love the human. It's like we've been watching the humanity of the disciples, and you see a little bit of it with Jesus. You know when he's tired, and um, and this one, you know, he walks into the home, um, his mom's house. You know, blesses the you know the uh, his her home when he walks in. Um, I love their prayer at the dinner table. It wasn't super formal. It was very casual, very intimate. Um, even the reference to the strained relationship with his brothers. Um, I thought was, again, leading up to the whole, you know, uh, um, 
a teacher's not respected, you know, in his hometown. A prophet's not respected in his hometown. You know, just, he was just a guy. He was just another kid like everybody else. Uh, and so, you know, that tension that was going on of, yes, Jesus is just Jesus, but no, we, you know, we want Jesus to be more. And there was a lot of that dynamic going on between the people trying to figure out what's happening here when Jesus started to open up. And I know there's a lot here, so I'll, I'll stop at that, Bob, and you can kind of jump in and then we can see, you know, how much more we can talk yeah. about. Um, so one, let's clarify something, make it very clear. Almost none of this has a biblical story tied to it. In other words, what we yeah. do have this entire episode, let's make this very clear. These are not misinterpretations or twisting mm -hmm. of biblical stories. They are finding um, things that we know about. We know that Jesus had brothers and sisters. We mm -hmm. know that there was tension. We, um, we know that there was a man, Lazarus, that was dear to him. Yes. We have this. So mm -hmm. Dallas has taken the, the poetic license in storytelling to weave him into the story. You weave Lazarus in the story and we, and we cheat because we know the end. This is right. one of those things. Not like you're looking at this story like you don't know what's coming next. Like you said, you're waiting for this emotional moment inside the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only reason you do that is because you know what the ending is. If not, mm -hmm. you're like the rest of them, sitting there confused. Like, w w what's going on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the elements, oh, by the way, he's, he's not blessing the home when he walks in. He's touching, and it's a Jewish thing to and kiss a mezuzah that's on the wall. Mm -hmm. on the doorways so he's doing what every jew does going through a doorway that has a mezuzah on it you'll you'll see them out it, actually if you watch you'll you'll see actually a friend of ours has one yeah yeah um peters you see when he goes to his house you'll see that you'll see that in in the homes and they do it a lot in the show it's interesting that it seems to have stood out a little more when he's w walking into his his own home yeah um, so what is but, the purpose of the mezuzah? I mean, are, are they praying? Are in, they in, inside there are remember it's in, in the, um, the scriptures, in the scriptures, it talks about write the door, write mm -hmm. write it metaphorically on the doorposts right. of your house, on your gates, right. on your wherever. Mm -hmm. So that there's, um, those commandments are in, uh, rolled up in a little scroll right. inside a mezuzah. And then it's put on a doorpost. And tradition has it at a certain angle and those kind of things, which I, I like. I have no problem with that at all. I, 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 and I do. I, I love them. Um, and that's one of those neat things that mm -hmm. they're showing a very Jewish culture here. Um, and and they, they, they make that point. Um, you, you, you mentioned some, there were some awkward moments to me. Now, this, now it, I love how it hits us each differently in this. I, I do. Because I'm looking at, they painted the rabbi into a corner. And mm -hmm. you, we go, well, rabbi needed to paint a corner. I said, no, actually, that was manipulative and rude. If, if you were looking at it and, and from the other way, the rabbi, that was rude to paint, to force him to have mm -hmm. Jesus talk. Jesus never wedged himself in this. That was not a plan for him to talk. He, was, he did not come there at the beginning. When he was... When he first shows up, he doesn't, he's, all he wanted to right. do was come in, see mom, pick up the box. Okay. That was his purpose. He got wedged into that. At the time he was going to do that, then it was okay. Let in, in his reserve, it was okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, if, if not now, when, just like he was talking with mom, you know, um, with, with, um, Ema and mm -hmm. deciding, okay, it's time to say that because the rumors they kept saying at the party, we've heard a bunch of rumors. We've heard a bunch of rumors and he's then there, he's making that call. Um, uh, again, there was an element that I like. You always see Jesus with his backpack. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and often with a staff. You'll see him regularly with a walking stick. I'm I'm hoping we get to be able to talk about that more, not this episode, but down the road. Because I think there'll be a point where that just might be a point where I might want to bring up something. Um, so note to people, mm -hmm. scribble a post-it note. Bob, we'll talk about this later. Um, but I, 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 I like how they do that. And it's an element that follows in when he's ready to go. He says, here it is, gives his backpack back. Um, right. The rabbi's prayer inside the synagogue. How did that, do you both remember it? Vaguely, okay. give a summary. Because it, it hit me differently mm -hmm. on this, is that you go and he's he's saying a prayer and it's, um, and he starts a prayer and it's, it's a typical prayer. Um, mm -hmm. And blah, 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 blah. And it looks like it goes a little longer than what Jesus is wanting for it to go on, but it goes on and poof, it, it does its piece. And you get the point? Is he thought, like, is it is that a big pompous prayer? Is it a meaningful prayer? Is it one that, and I said, and be careful, be careful before you jump on the pompous side of the equation, because we've all heard this, and then some, mm -hmm. in our own churches. And Jesus specifically talks about not doing this mm -hmm. but we always take that point of but that's not us right we always say that he says but no 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 that's only about them right can't be about me and one of those um awkward things and um when he opens up the scroll and he reads and he's reading from the from the prophet isaiah they all knew what they were hearing mm -hmm. okay and yet i think in our churches we don't um we don't even stop in a story like this and go back and open up isaiah and mm. talk about where it's coming from because th there's a purpose to that mm -hmm. and the reference to uh prophet not being Recognize. So that's not new. A prophet not being accepted in their home areas, that's right. not new. That's almost a hallmark. You'd almost you almost say, what well, what's a mark of one of these guys? Nobody really wants him because mm -hmm. he's saying things that you we're not ready to hear. Yeah. yeah? Um and that challenges me on those, you know, that, that, uh, and, and thinking we're so, we think they should have understood where, who Jesus was at the time. And I think we're in for a rude awakening for ourselves, but that's another story. Um, they wanted vengeance. <laughs> they brought that up a couple times. They wanted vengeance. They were ready for Messiah to be something. And he wasn't ready for it. Or, and said, that's not why I'm here. It irritates some folks. Um, <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it it, it kind of, it, it kind of does. Um, so... That said, we, we haven't even gotten to the meat of this a, a bit. So I, I think this is going to be a two-parter because we haven't even gotten to, to, to the meat of, of this d d discussion yet. Um, but wh how, how do you take their um, initial... They, he's, he is one of them. Mm -hmm. Right? He is one of them. He's there for Rosh Hashanah, right? He's a, this is the first of Tishri. It's a New Year's celebration. They're all getting their food, feast, festivities, fun. I, I think we, we have this very somber look like people didn't go and party or have fun there. And, oh, no, they're having mm -hmm. a good time. 
and they're supposed to. Um, but uh, um, they 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 wanted they wanted Jesus. They wanted party tricks out of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence the line to physician, heal yourself is, is the scenario. They, they wanted him to do something and he wasn't prepared to do it. Um, what do you think of that? That, you know, they, they, they the only way they're going to take him is if he, he goes and says, well, do something for us. Dad? Yeah. That's uh, very true. I mean, again, uh, they they all, all at the gathering, like you said, they were. Uh, uh, Mary said, "We have a better one than probably other ones you went to. We have much more fun uh, in in that." And um, uh, Jesus, Jesus was. Everybody that came up to him was talking about what he had done and what they had heard. Rumors. And uh, they, well, there, there, there's some people here that might just uh, run out of wine to see what you're going to do for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I think, I think you're, you're right there. I hadn't uh, put much emphasis on that, but I think it's absolutely right. But in, in, uh, uh, Rabbi Benjamin, when he introduced him, he he was kind of setting the stage for what he wanted Jesus to say. This this was this was what he had. Uh, and so he could take. I don't know about taking credit for it, but just that's that's what he wanted Jesus to talk about. In my in my opinion, and then when Jesus got up there and said what he said, uh, it just it just threw uh, everybody. Uh, well, well, wait a minute, you know, the, yeah. you're you're taking what you did there, and you're turning it into something much greater. It wasn't, but that's what they were saying. And you, so you're saying that you're the Messiah. And I don't want to get too far down that if we're going to do two episodes. Mm -hmm. But I, I just think the whole thing was uh, very interesting when um, Lazarus kind of forced Jesus on Benjamin and then Benjamin sets him up. And, and it, it's, it's really, uh, really, really well done. Jim. And Bob, you've you've alluded to this before. You know, we we know the end of the story, so we read into you know kind mm -hmm. of what's going on and and mm -hmm. people there. It's one thing to hear a heretic, you know, let's say some guy's on television now, you know, who's mm -hmm. espouses some belief system. And you're like, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. But if your friend comes up and says, "I'm believing this," it's going to feel different. Mm -hmm. You know, and and here, you know, they they see Jesus as the guy they've always known, and all of a sudden he's saying things that are not lightly taken. No, no. And it would be a lot easier if somebody else did it. Man, boom, let's take him out and kill him. But all of a sudden, wait, 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 what do I do here? Because we know this guy. We know he isn't like that but he's saying things that are like that therefore mm -hmm. we're torn mm -hmm. and they're conflict even the rabbi i think was conflicted i don't think it was just an immediate oh yeah sure boom oh, no he was he, he was very torn and very conflicted yeah, he that. wanted him to to take it back take it yeah. back and i'll let it go you know yeah. i won't hold it against you no. um and so and they're doing that what they're supposed to do <clears throat> mm -hmm. absolutely and jesus wasn't telling them not to no <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, he knew that what he was saying was going to bring this about. Mm -hmm. So he was well aware of the consequences, mm -hmm. um, didn't stop him from saying it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, again, like I said, next week, we'll talk more about what or next time more about what, what? it is that he said and, and the significance of it yeah. um, and its impact on them. 
um, and even you know what resulted as a um, as a consequence of it. But absolutely confusing uh, in that room as to what is going on and what are we supposed to do about it. Right. And that's that's what we're going to get to talk about. In words, that's what I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to. Is that okay? Well, you you put it very well. What did we just hear? Mm-hmm. And then what are we what are we going to do with with this? Now mm-hmm. we this has been dropped in our this is the hot potato, or or the elephant in the room. In other words, it's not. Mm-hmm. But they can't let it be there. The rabbi can't let that hang right. as the elephant in the room and say. Okay, you close the book and you go, amen, you know, and everybody leaves the church and they go, did he just say what I thought I heard him say? Um, whereas the rabbi is going, um, if I hear you saying what you're saying, mm-hmm. this is a done deal, you know, um, because they're not ready. But we'll get as the wise precondition the stuff. So no. we've set this up v- v- very well for mm-hmm. that. Um because I think it'll be fun. Because we we need to remember that what he what he mentions is real. What he is saying in his the kingdom of God message that he's giving on this is mm-hmm. real. This event, the story we're still talking about, is a story told. It's not a biblical sc- scripture story. So let's right. let's kind of keep that in mind, folks. And I want to remind people that that we're not looking for. For um, you know, where is this? And we're we're not looking to defend it. We're looking to merely say, in the story side of the equation, what are we gonna you know, talk about and and and, right. and how Dallas has portrayed it and right. how it's gonna play. Yeah, fair. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so we'll get ready. So obviously, people, there'll be a part two, which is which will be fun because I think there's there's a lot to talk about here. Thank you, gents. Um, we're gonna have fun with more. And uh, takes it the point to ponder our usual piece, and it's going to end the usual way because we're talking about chosen. Um, selected as the best. It's interesting. This one focuses on words rather than people um, and how they're going to play out. So this will be interesting for part two. Thank you for being with us tonight. Another episode of Sons of the Father on the Dusty Feet. Thank you.